Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Bethany and today is a good day to join in on the fun because I am taking you behind the scenes of my craft room. I like to do this about once a year and it's been about a year and I was looking around the other day thinking a lot of things have actually changed. So it's time to turn the camera around, open all the drawers, go through all the bins and I'm going to show you everything about my craft space. So since the last time I filmed, I have changed a few things. However, a lot of things have stayed the same and I'm really gonna go into that in this video today. So I'm talking a lot about zones and systems in a craft room, how you can use those to make sure you are using the space that you have to the best of your ability. And also, so you can organize your craft supplies in a way that you know exactly where they are for the given craft you're doing. So I personally like to do a lot of different things. I like to do machine embroidery. I like to do a lot of Cricut things. I like to do card making, all sorts of things. So when you have a lot of different types of crafts it's a really important to organize your craft room in a way that you know exactly all of the um, materials and where they are and you're not kind of hunting everywhere for everything so a lot of things have stayed the same but actually a lot of things have also respectively changed I've added some counter space and a lot of additional storage so I'm really excited to show you all of that so if you're ready please be sure to hit the thumbs up button I know you're so excited to see this because I've been asked to do an updated tour and I am going to open all the drawers and show you everything about my craft space so let's go ahead and get started before we get started though, a friendly reminder that I did take a lot of time to link a lot of the things you're going to see today in that description box below the video. So be sure you check that out. There is a little arrow that you can click next to the title that opens up that description box. And I'm going to do my very best to link everything that you see here today. Not everything because we obviously can't fit everything in that little box, but I'm going to do my best to do the big ticket items for you. The things that I know people ask over and over again about. However, there are some things that I haven't been able to find, so hopefully you can recreate some of these looks yourself and find the things that you need. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm so excited to bring you another craft room tour. I know you all really, really love these. Again, I am going to be the narrator and the camera lady all just rolled into one today. So I appreciate all of your patience and grace as I try to do all of the things and make this as smooth as possible. But before we dive into the craft room tour, I just wanted to give you an idea of the layout of my craft space. So my craft room is in our daylight basement. I love it so much. I'm really blessed to have this space. And to the left of my craft room is just our workout area. So we have our Peloton over there and a couple other pieces of equipment that we like to work out on. And this is my craft room. So because you know that I film my crafts, or if you're joining us for the first time for this tour, I do film and I film all of the things that I do on my craft table. So that being said, you will see if I pan back a little bit, you will see a lot of filming equipment. So you'll see multiple cameras, a lot of additional lighting, and that is all so that I can bring you guys some really, really good footage and so you can see my crafts really well. Now, for the sake of this tutorial and little craft room tour, I am going to focus solely on just craft room organization and how I approach that. And more specifically, I'm going to show you how I have really changed some of my organization and how I have kept certain things that have really worked for me, but also started working more in zones. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So this space really hasn't changed much since the last time I filmed my craft room tour. I still have not done anything with this wall. I just cannot quite figure out what I want to do. So for now, it perfectly holds some of my kids artwork, which honestly is always a perfect idea. So I also have these little drawer units. So they have let me count really quick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so seven drawers, but they are individual. So they're individual from one another in that this is a set, this is a set, this is a set, and this is a set. So I have a total of four. Originally, I only purchased three and then realized that I really wanted to span this entire wall. So I went ahead and purchased the fourth. I absolutely love this space. This space actually didn't change much because it honestly works so well for me and how I organize and craft that much of this is the exact same. 
So over here, I just hold my sublimation oven. I don't use it over here because it tiptoes into my filming space when I do tutorials. So this is just kind of, it's a little home away from home when not in use. One thing I really like about this little area is that my husband installed some outlets on the top of the countertops, which are super, super handy and nice. And let's go ahead and just dive into drawers. I'm gonna show you it all. So last time I showed you inside the drawers, you loved it. Not a lot has changed but if you are joining for the first time and want to see inside then your wish is my command so I am going to go ahead and show you actually before I show you I'm going to give you an idea of how I organize everything so I did kind of do like an ombre style of um, little titles on my drawers little labels is a better word and I love the way it turned out. It turned out really, really nicely. And I only need to redo one, which is the felt and fabric, but you guys will see why in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and start. So I organize this whole front first one is predominantly vinyl and then we go down to iron-on and then infusible ink with some more miscellaneous things and then the fourth bank of drawers is more just general craft supplies so let's go ahead and take a peek into all of these little drawers so the first one is pattern vinyl I like to kind of organize in somewhat of a rainbow order just because I know that if I'm looking for a pattern vinyl in a certain tone or hue then I know which drawer to go to so we have that then we have have more of the cooler tones down here and I like to personally roll my vinyl in HTV it comes with its positives and negatives but it really really works for me I really like to open up a drawer and see all that I have it's kind of like how I organize my closet I like everything hung up I like my shoes all out because if I can see it then I'll use it if I can't see it then I don't know that I necessarily have it and then I end up either rebuying or not using the craft supplies that I have so then the next drawer is solid vinyl organized in the same way so in rainbow order to the best that I can another solid vinyl these are more of the whites and creams and grays and then down below we have our smart vinyl so this is all for the Cricut Joy and I did my best to do rainbow order there too I'm just in love with the rainbow order I can't get enough of it Okay, next door is printable vinyl. So I also have some of the um, deluxe paper for the Cricut Joy, but I also have printable vinyl. I haven't crafted with that in a while, and I used to craft with that so much, so I should probably get inspired with that. My final drawer in the first bank of drawers is transfer tape. So I have all types of transfer tape that I love. Plus I like to keep an empty bin for all of the little scrap pieces that I have once they come off of these bigger rolls. So I like to store them there. As you can see, I'm doing an A plus job and using all my scraps because that's quite empty right now. Okay, as for the second bank of drawers, we're starting off with patterned iron-on. Again, organized rainbow order. This is probably one of my favorite drawers ever. I just love the patterns and the colors. It's so pretty. And then again, additional patterned iron-on, just kind of organized by color and tone. And then we'll move on to the solid iron-on. And I like to go ahead and use washi tape when rolling and securing my um, vinyl and iron-on. Additional solid iron-on there, and then smart iron-on. So again, this is for the joy. I have it in the sheets over here, as well as some rolls over here. Okay, we have some stickers and stencils. So I have some sticker um, paper products over here, as well as some stencil vinyl. And then my final one is wood. So this is for cutting wood on the Cricut Maker. I haven't done that in a while either, so I probably should do that too. I'm doing much better shopping my craft space, so my goal is to empty out a lot of these drawers and in, instead of actually going to the store and purchasing more. So I'm doing a pretty good job. I have infusible ink in this first drawer, and then it continues into the second and third as well, just based on the pure size of it. Plus it's, I like to keep it in the boxes. Um, and I do so because you have to keep it really, really dry. So I wanna keep it in the box um, just to make sure no moisture gets it. So it can kind of be a little bit more bulky to store, but definitely worth it. And I try my best to, again, just organize them by tone. So we have some of the warmer tones up here and then some of the cooler tones down below. 
And then of course the Joy Infusible Ink in the smaller rolls here. And then Felt and Fabric. I actually need to change this because I now have fallen in love with faux leather, which you'll see in this drawer here too. But I need to actually say faux leather in here too because I love it so much. I have two overflowing drawers of it. It is just amazing. I love doing in the hoop projects with it. I'll link a tutorial of something I've made recently with it, but faux leather is where it's at for me right now. So I just have so much. I'm love, love, loving it. Okay. So I have, um, the full sheets. Usually they're around eight and a half by 11. And then some of the sheets that I have cut down. So I have some of my scrap sheets down here and actually I think I have additional scraps in here so pardon me this is not scraps these are just some smaller sheets that I have purchased so the bigger sheets I've purchased smaller sheets I purchased none of this has been cut into yet and then down here I have some of the rolls that I've purchased and then these are my scraps over here so things that I have trimmed already but I like to save everything that I can because there are so many fun things you can make with smaller pieces of faux leather Continuing on to foil, some here are just some of the um, foil transfer sheets that I use with the Cricut. And then this, I haven't opened this yet. I was going to use it for a birthday party and never did, but here is some party foil. I've never worked with that, so again, I should probably get that out and get inspired with it. So moving on to the final bank of drawers, we have bits and bobs. This was one of the most popular questions last time. Um, when talking about where these containers came from. So I just have a little bit of everything here. So I have some wool balls here. I have some wooden beads and then lots of like little thumbtacks and confetti type items for card making. I really need to make a shaker card with some of these, but lots of just really fun things. I found these containers at Michael's and unfortunately last time I just could not find them to link them. I will do my very best to find them, but if you don't see them in the description box, I simply just couldn't find them. But they are from Michael's. I think they're around a dollar a piece, but I think I bought them in a bulk pack online. Additional bits and bobs are in this second drawer. I really wanted to get into this dot art. <laughs> I really still want to get into dot art, but you know, time. So this is a really cute little project I really want to try. So I have the little supplies there for that. Okay, resin supplies. Uh, I have all the supplies. I just don't have the, uh, let's see, what do I want to call it? Um, bravery, I guess. I'm so nervous to try resin. So I have some things that I had purchased on sale when I was really gearing up to try it and then I halted and just got so nervous that I didn't bullet journaling things so I have some of my bullet journaling stencils and then in here are some additional supplies plus an additional bullet journal down in there I'm trying my best to do great with this camera but pardon me if it's a little um wonky here are some heat press mats as well as a cover sheet for the heat press and then bright pad. I do not use this very much. Um, in fact, if at all, I've used it a few times, but it's not something that I grab a ton. And then finally, this last drawer is just miscellaneous. So these are little things that I use, just a set of tools that I need um, every once in a while. And then I have my staple gun. I also have a hairdryer down here in case I'm painting and really just need to hurry it along. Um, so I have that and then some additional, um, you know, staples and things down there. So this is kind of my little uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor drawer, but all in pink. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next zone. Okay, so this is my next zone here. This is simply storage. So I have a printer on top. I don't use it quite often, but I do have a printer. And then I just have some basic storage. So since the last time that I filmed this, I still have not ended up labeling my little um, labels here, but that's okay because I kind of feel like these are starting to empty out a little bit, so they may be changing anyway. One thing that's really important to me, and I know this sounds silly, but I really like to have empty spaces in my craft room not only does it give me room to grow but it also just makes me feel less overwhelmed and like less that I am um, just overflowing if that makes sense I don't know it's just something I like to have I try to strive to have an empty drawer or an empty bin in every room it's just the way I am but anyway that is kind of my little empty space 
I have some sublimation mugs here. This is just a bin of baby things. So baby shirts, um, little onesies, bibs, things that if I need to quickly make something for a small one, baby shower, anything like that, then I have it there. In this bin down below, these are just little jars. I like to keep these on hand. I actually found these particular ones at Target, I believe. I like to shop the sales, but I like having jars like this because they're really nice for teacher gifts or any type of little gift. So it can put some vinyl on there for the season or occasion and then fill it with candy or whatnot. And I just, I think it's wonderful to have that stuff on hand. In here is my button press and accessories. And finally, in here are just some additional sublimation things. So I have some sublimation garden flags, some mouse pads, and little phone pop sockets, things like that. Okay, so moving on to our next zone over here, I have, this is going to be the actual new area since I filmed a craft room tour. So since filming a craft room tour last year, I've really gotten into applique and machine embroidery. So many of you know that I brought Babs home. She is my embroidery machine. I love her so much, but with her came a lot of baggage. So now we have lots of fabric. We have lots of thread. We have lots of bins of things. And because Babs came home with me, now I have a whole new zone for just sewing and embroidery. And that is what you will see here. So we put together this really nice island and in fact on the other side are bar stools so i'll try to peek over there if i can yes so i have some little bar stools over here and this is where my girls like to sit and just color or do anything and hang out with mama while she's crafting and so i like to have a space for them as well so these came from let's see ikea and they're just like dresser drawer units I believe and then on the back I had my husband sorry I'm going to try to do this gracefully and gently but I had my husband put um a finishing touch on the back so he finished that all up for me it just looks super super nice and polished that way it just looks more intentional and built in and then he installed a matching countertop that matches this and my back countertop over there okay so this is again just a new area for me, but let's go ahead and start with the little um, craft cart. So this little zone for me is heating tools. So I keep all of my little easy presses over here. I don't use them as much anymore now that I got my heat press, but I still do bring them out every once in a while um, for certain things. And then I have, of course, so the biggest Cricut Easy Press, medium, and then my small ones in there with the mini. And then I also have a little bin just for cords. So I personally prefer to go ahead and just unplug anything once I'm done using it. So like my Cricut machine, once I'm done using it, obviously I just unplug it, put all the cords away. It's just personal preference, but it's how I operate. Um, so that is just a bin there for all of that type of stuff down there. Okay, over on the top here, this is my organization system and I have a whole video on it, but this is how I organize all of my scrap HTV and scrap vinyl. Originally, I had it in two acrylic file folder bins, but I went ahead and consolidated it down into one, and then I went ahead and used my other bin for paper, and you'll see that later. So I have it go, um, and again, I have a whole video on this, but I have it just um, all divided by color so if you peek down in here actually i probably don't have much orange but i definitely have a plethora of pink so down in here you'll see all of my pink scraps of htv and then down where you see the second row of pink this is going to be all of my pink scrap um, vinyl adhesive vinyl so that is just my little storage system for keeping all the little scraps that come off of my projects because i like to save as much as i can and i do have videos on how i have just used scraps only for um, certain projects so kind of like a little challenge just to use your scraps and then back behind here this is my binder that holds all of my directions for embroidery projects that I'm working on um, I love to do Kimberbell projects so I like to keep their directions in there it's just a little home for all of that 
Okay, so let's go ahead and go into this new little island area. Now this is seriously one of my favorite parts of my craft space now. It's been just such a blessing in terms of growing in my craft room and the the really nice deep drawers are really perfect for this hobby or the way that I like to organize this hobby of machine embroidery and sewing. So I really, really just enjoyed getting this all organized for myself and it's been working out really, really well. So let's go ahead and just dive on in. So again, I do have the bar stools on the other side, allowing the kids to come down and just do their thing while I'm crafting. It's just nice to have um, an area where we can spend some time together. This is just a little area for my kiddos things. So we have notebooks of course they bring more things down when they'd like to but um, I like to keep some basic notebooks and some you know gel pens and fun little coloring things down here that they can use and grab quickly and then I have my cutting mat here. I also am working on my very first quilt, so you'll see some quilt blocks here. But I have my cutting mat here. On the other side, of course, is um, the little grid. Um, but I really, really like using this area for cutting. Sometimes I do actually bring my cutting mat over here because let's just be honest, cutting can be very, very boring. So I like to put on um, some of my favorite YouTube tutorials or just binge watch anything that I can just to make the act of cutting fabric a little bit more enjoyable because that can be a little crazy and monotonous sometimes. Okay, so this is going to be my zone for sewing and embroidery. So in this first drawer, I have lots of different things. So over here, I have the little cards that I like to wrap my fabric in, and that allows me to store my fabric just like this over my embroidery machine. Again, I have it in rainbow order, and I use those cards to just make it all nice and uniform. I really like to be able to see it because it just, again, if I can see it, then I'll use it. If I can see it, I know I have it. If I can see it, then it's easier for me to grab and quickly craft. So that's what works for me. But those little um, folders in there, let me see if I can get back down here again. The little folders are how I wrap them. And I have a whole video on how I get everything all prepped and wrapped in terms of fabric. Then I have some pins. I actually don't use the pins very much. I actually use the clips way more. And then I have just some you know, adhesives down here. So I have a heat and bond light and some fusible fleece. And then I have some stabilizer that I like to keep this um, poly mesh. Um, this is a cutaway. I like to keep this in here just because I grab for it often. So I like to gr have some stuff that I grab for really, really readily and available. I have my embroidery tape here, a couple additional spools of thread. <laughs> these are actually, um, I was doing a project and doing faux chenille. So I purchased these little brushes and it really helped the little faux chenille project. And then this is, I really like this tool. Let me see if I can get it out. This is a little caddy, if you will, that holds all of my little embroidery scissors. So I fell in love with the Kimberbell embroidery scissor set and I went ahead and purchased it. And then I have additional scissors and then I have my starch pen, which is amazing for quilting in the hoop. I love it so, so much. So I love this. I just bring this out when I am working on some machine embroidery. And then I like to, again, just tuck it all back in when I am not using it. Just, I like to keep it neat. I have some additional fabric here, such as just some little charm packs or smaller pieces. Look how tiny these little mini charms are. I bought a couple of them and I just love them so much. And when you're doing applique, you really don't need a ton of fabric. So I thought those were really, really fun to have. Okay, so that is the first drawer. Moving on to the next drawer. Down here I have felt. So I have a lot of colors of felt over here. And then I recently um, purchased and I'm trying out the Kimberbell felt. So I have that in rolls, whereas obviously you can see these are purchased in sheets. So again, Kimberbell has theirs in rolls. So I went ahead and I'm trying out some of that. And these are just kind of like those little paper bins, if you will. So I love these. We use these in a lot of different areas in our home and they really, really work well in a craft space, especially for the nice big deep drawers like this. 
In here are just some miscellaneous supplies like zippers that I actually, this is purely zippers. So I have some of the really neat um, exposed lace zippers that I'm doing a project with soon. I'm making a bag and I'm excited about that. So look out for that. So I just keep all the zippers in there and then some additional um, embroidery items. So some faux leather for embroidery and then some cork. So I really love this drawer. I love how it's organized. Again, if I can see it, then I can quickly grab it and use it. And then in the final bottom drawer, I have a lot of the projects that I am starting and or working on. So before I get into that, I have a really nice little caddy for thread. So this is actually a lot of the miscellaneous thread that I don't use as much. Um, so a lot of thread kits come with a lot of colors. They come with just a lot of tones of colors. So I keep a lot of the you know, extra browns and burgundies and things that I don't necessarily grab for a lot. I keep them in here. And then I also have my variegated thread on the top, but I know it's there. I know that if I, for some reason, need an additional color that, you know, I can go look there first before purchasing, but I just keep those there. Okay. So I have a bunch of Kimberbell um, little design CDs that of projects that I am working on. I really am excited about all things Kimberbell. They just do an amazing job. So I have a lot of fun with doing their projects. These are some projects that are coming to the channel soon that I am really excited about. I have the project kits for, so I'm going to be doing the candy cane lane pillow. And that's really, really exciting. So I have the fabric for that and the embellishment kit for that. And then I'm also doing, is this the, this might be the, um, yes, this is the uh, Twilight Boulevard or Boulevard. Um, so that is another little bench pillow, I think. Oh, this is just some other additional projects. Again, they're all just kind of organized by project. Some more fabric kits for additional projects that I'm working on, and that's that. So just some projects that are kind of organized and ready to go, but haven't quite gotten around to them just yet, or it's just not the time for them seasonally. Okay, back up to this top drawer here. So the top drawer has basically just some cutting mats and it has my ironing board which is really really helpful um i have a tutorial on how i made this desktop ironing board so i just grab and go when i need it i have a smaller cutting mat here and then i have this nice zippered pouch full of things for my embroidery machine so i have some some scissors i also have things and tools for my machine that came with my machine so i like to keep that all in one space so if i need something i know that I can just go in there and grab it so that's all there and then of course I have like my manuals and things under there in case I run into a little stinker of a problem and I need to learn something new <laughs> about my machine okay down here I have my hoops so I just got the hat hoop I'm really excited but I haven't done a hat with it yet so these are the hoops for my machine and then I have my snaps that go with my snap press and then I have an additional handheld press down here and the final drawer, let's see. Oh, it's going to be a surprise to both of us because I forgot what I put down here. This is actually brand new within the last month. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to organize my scrap fabric. And I decided that I am going to organize it by color in these nice bins. So I love these bins so much. They came from Target. I'll try to link them down below. But I did the kind of pinks, red, orange, yellow here. So warmer tones, cooler tones of blue, teal, green, etc. there. Then we have our whites, blacks, browns here. And then I have our specialty things here. So felt, glitter. Oh, let's see, this is a, um, a little glitter iron-on that you can use for machine embroidery. And then this is like a faux leather. So just some more specialty materials that come off of projects that I don't necessarily want to toss because that's a substantial amount of material that I could use somewhere else, but it's too small, obviously, to store somewhere else. So I really love this drawer. It's been working out really, really great. Again, I can see it, so then I'll just be sure to check it really quick and see if I can use any of my scraps before cutting into, you know, bigger pieces of fabric. Okay, over here, this is another little system that I developed purely for um, filming. So I have a little craft cart here. 
and I just organize my videos over here. So the top um, little area up here is going to be the next video that I'm filming or it's, you know, coming up. So I have things that are all going to go into this video. Then I have the next video down here. And then of course I know, you know, maybe I need to put some vinyl in here that I'm going to be using. Anyway, I just like to get everything kind of organized in this area. This is the third video that's coming up. Just another thing that helps me kind of think of the crafts that I am going to be doing in the near future. And as I am shopping around my craft space, because you know I'm trying to shop more of my craft space and not buy as much, but as I'm going around my craft space, I can take things out, put them in the cart and kind of get an idea of what I have, what I still need to get and where I can um, reuse things. Over here is some additional storage area for my machine embroidery and sewing things. So I have the little Ikea pegboard up here, which is really, really nice and handy. We put a little thread rack up here. I have additional thread storage coming up in my craft room tour, but I really, really love that. Um, and then I have some scissors. I also have my Kimberbell mister and my embroidery tape rotary cutter and then I have my um, tabletop press for the snaps so that's really really awesome for doing um, in the hoop projects and making fun little things okay so in this first little area I have all of my stabilizer and I really really love the little slap bands that tell me what stabilizer is which because sometimes especially when you're just starting out they all look the same I'm getting better about being able to tell the difference between them but I just have all of my stabilizers so far in there and and I have them so that I can see them, but also tucked away so that it just stays nice and organized in here. In here, this is just essentially additional storage things that I might need. So empty organizational or de decor items that I'm not currently using, but could need in the future. So I just kind of keep that there. You never know when you're going to need a little organizational jar or bin. So I just keep things that I'm not using, but don't want to get rid of in there. I have additional sewing things in the second row. In here I have my hoops. So these are fun for doing cute little projects. And so I keep some hoops in there. And then I have some polyfill in here and that's really fun to use. And then down here I have kiddos shirts. So I like to shop a sale and if I see things that are on sale then I go ahead and grab them and keep them in the kiddos sizes because you never know when they're going to come home from school and say tomorrow is such and such day and I need a shirt and you know what mama has a cricket or an embroidery machine and we'll get, get it made. But it's nice to have things on hand plus it's helpful with tutorials to be able to just grab really quickly and try new things on there. Then down here, this is actually silly, but this is a bunch of things that I'm kind of keeping for Valentine's Day. And usually I don't store things by holiday, but I kind of went a little bit um, ambitious during that Valentine's Day season. So I have a little um, bin just for Valentine's Day things that I will bring to you next year at this point. And then gotta love a nice empty bin. It just makes my heart happy. So nothing is in there. I'm sure someday it'll be nice and filled to the brim, but for now it's nice and empty and organized. Okay, so one thing I really like to do design wise is I like to have different baskets and I just think it makes it kind of fun to just kind of break up all of the fun. Sorry, you can see my camera here, but it just kind of breaks up, you know, the area kind of brings some color to it. So I went ahead and did some blush and then some mint. These are plastic, of course, at the top, but then nice, a nice linen mint. And then it's some open things. I really liked the open, I think they're kind of like book bins or toy bins, but I really liked those. Um, all of these things came from Target and I will very much try to link them below, but the open bin is really nice for the clothing items. So, okay, so in terms of organization of machine embroidery and sewing things, that is how I approached it. I really like how it turned out. It's really working for me. Again, a lot of the difference between the last time I did my craft room tour and now is either 
as expanding and doing new things and doing different things or changing things that weren't necessarily working in terms of how I like to craft. So sometimes you just have to reorganize and do new systems and new zones for how you end up working. So that's also one big thing that I want to mention when you are setting up a craft space, be sure to set it up, then craft in it for a little bit and see if it's really working for you. Because sometimes the way you think that it should be set up doesn't really feel realistic once you go and start crafting inside of it, if that makes sense. Okay, so kind of stepping back here, again, we had over on the left, the new little island and um, more storage in the back, but when we span to the right here, this is going to be a lot more familiar because this is where I bring my craft to you. This is where I show you what I'm working on on my craft table. So over here is my desk. This is where I film. Again, I have a lot of additional lighting and I also have a lot of filming equipment both up above me and then I have filming equipment in front of me for more of an interview style and it's also very helpful with my lives. And then I also have new filming equipment over here for my embroidery machine and my heat press as well. So again, I'm not really gonna go into the filming gear and aspect of that. I did go into that in my last craft room tour. So if that's something you're interested in, I will go ahead and link that tour for you. I'll go ahead and try to give a little bit of information about my filming equipment in the description box below. But for the sake of this video we're just going to be doing craft room organization so so here's my desk this is what you see this is what you know my famous craft mat which I did make myself I get so many questions on that and I did do a tutorial on it but I also have this really nice stand up sit down desk that I really like and someone recently asked me what I prefer if I prefer standing up or sitting down and quite honestly ever since I started sewing and doing machine embroidery I prefer to stand I think it's because I end up going back and forth from my desk space to my embroidery machine so much that I just end up forgetting to sit down. So I definitely utilize the stand up sit down feature on this desk so much more now and it's actually really, really nice. So I do have these little buttons here. They come obviously on the desk. It's from Ikea. I don't really have a ton of information on it other than it's the electronic stand up sit down desk. Um, but it goes up and down based on preference. I usually find that I sit down more when I am editing a video or just working in general, but when crafting, I definitely prefer to stand. So on my desk, of course, is my Cricut machine. And then I also have my little llama of glue sticks, so much fun. And then you'll see just other little things like my computer and some markers and things like that. And then to the left here, I have my pegboard system, which I really, really like. It's really nice for me to put things over there that I grab frequently and need most often. So I like to keep my Cricut mats over here and then I have my hot glue plus my cup cradle back there and then I have my pen storage cradle and my tool cradle up here that I really love. I'll link them down below and I know a lot of you have purchased those as well and really love them. And then I have my transfer tape just in a roll here and my ruler. Again, these are things that I grab for over and over again so I make sure that I have them really really handy and close by. Then I have just some additional tools, notebooks, some vinyl and transfer tape there. Okay so moving on over here this is where I store my Cricut machines. Last time I did this tour the most popular question was where I got these really nice wall hanging shelves. So the ones to the right and to the left right over here of floating shelves those were purchased from target i could not find them last time to link them i'm pretty sure i won't be able to find them this time but they are from target so if you don't see them in the description box below again i just could not find them my husband made the floating shelves in between which really really are nice for providing some additional storage and honestly pretty much just some nice decor so Cricut machines on the right and again on the left I have fabric storage, I have some scissors and then also my heat press for um, mugs right on the top there. 
And then on the back counter, of course, we have Babs. I'm getting ready to work on another quilt block this evening, so I like to keep my stuff just all prepped and ready because I like to sew after bedtime, so I like to have a next project in mind ready to go. Over here, I purchased these really nice acrylic shelves and they are really nice for holding thread. So I'll link them down below. They came, I have four installed, but there were many more in the pack that I haven't used and I really, really like them. Plus they're within really nice reach of my machine when I am trying to color match. And then again, I do have the additional thread storage over there and I just have different ones. So this is a different brand than this. Actually, I think they may be the same brand, but different size. So these are the smaller spools. And again, it's just the thread that my machine tends to love. Over here, this is new to me and I need to get it all decorated. So I'll probably do that with y'all pretty soon. But this is just the little storage area for the fabric that I have prepped. So right now I'm working on my first quilt. So I have all of my fabric cut to size and prepped for each block that I am starting and working on. So this is so helpful to me to have this right next to my machine because again, I sometimes only have, you know, 30 minutes to craft. So I like having it all ready and prepped. I can just come down here, grab a quick little bag of fabric, know that it's all ready to go and then get a quick quilt block out. Then I have over here my heat press. This is one of my favorite things that I have. I was the person who said I will never ever have a heat press, but I bought one because it came out in this pretty blush and I never looked back. It's so, so nice. It's nice that it's always set up. I just really, really like it. And then I have my sublimation printer over on the right here. So I love that too. It's just, it's a nice little home for it and I have really fallen in love with sublimation. So before we go into the cabinet drawers really quickly, I'm just going to give you kind of a span of the space. Um, again, this is just the area that I am doing most of the filming in, so I really wanted it to work really well for me, make sure that I have the things I use the most within, you know, really good arms reach. Okay, so let's go ahead and just tiptoe into these cabinets. So again, I have a nice little bank of cabinets down here. I did go ahead and replace the um, hardware on the front just so they were nice and gold. I really like how they turned out. Since my last craft room tour, I have not changed much about the insides of these cabinets. And again, that's because the system was working for me. The way I had everything organized and placed in here is working. So if it's working, I tend to not do anything different. So I love how this all works for me. I do need to actually change um, the little label on here, but this is all kind of the uh, glass blanks that I have, things that I um, can grab really quickly, add some vinyl to, either for a gift or working on a video. I have sublimation blanks in this second basket. So you'll see a lot of sublimation shirts. I have my lint roller back there and then some heat protective gloves for when I'm working on things. I also have some of the Cricut coasters down in here and my heat resistant tape. So I like to organize by craft type. So I have things that are for sublimation over here. And then I have, you know, glassware, little tumblers, coffee cups, things over there, because then I know, you know, if I'm working on a quick gift and I need a coffee cup, then I know everything that um, is a potential item for a gift for making a coffee mug is right over here. If I'm working on making a sublimation item, I know to look over here for the blanks that will go with that. So that has just really worked for me. Then I have miscellaneous blanks down here. These are things like, well, additional mugs because I tend to buy those at Dollar Tree every chance I get, but little, um, Again, miscellaneous blanks, just like the little tag says. So jars, um, notebooks. I also have, I really like to decorate the uh, little gift bags. So I have things like that in there. And so I know that if I need something, you know, that's a little bit unique in terms of organization, then I will go ahead and look in there. Fabric blanks are things like tea towels. They are sweatshirts, shirts, anything like that. So if I want to make a shirt, then I know I need to go in there and see if I have the blank that I need for that project. So I really like how that 
is all organized. Again, since the last time I showed you my craft room, I haven't changed that because it really, really works for me. I think I did make a couple changes to this second little cabinet of um, craft supplies, I suppose. And um, this is now all purely paper crafting things. So I have all of my paper packs right up here. So these are all my 12 by 12 paper packs. Then I have um, on top my ribbon storage, which we did together in a live, which really, really turned out super nice. I have my washi tape in a little storage unit here, some candles for when I'm crafting. I like to bring those out sometimes if I can and have the time. And then let me just bring this out so I can show you behind. Actually, I don't know that that's too important, but I just have some additional cardstock placed in rainbow order behind. And again, that was that unit that I was using for my scrap vinyl. So I did repurpose that little organization unit and put my cardstock paper in there, which it actually was a great little... Um, idea and I can turn it see what colors I need really really quickly and be all ready to go I also have some watercolors as well as in the back I have some watercolor paper as well so that's just what worked for me in terms of organizing that size of cardstock and so that's how I like to do it down below I have some 12 by 12 individual sheets of cardstock and I liked to just have them separated by color. Again, that makes it really, really easy in terms of opening up this little cabinet, trying to find really quickly what I need and getting started quickly. To the side, I showed this last time, I just have these little plastic envelopes. Let me see if I can grab one. And inside here is where I just keep all the little scraps that come off the paper project. So if it's big enough, that um, you know I can reuse for another project then I just put them in these little pocket envelopes and then I know if I am working on something that requires smaller pieces I can look there first and then it down here I have some additional storage for card making supplies or paper crafting so I will bring some of these out looks like I could have oh these are just some embellishments up here these are adorable I really need to use these how cute are they Oh, love them. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring these out and then you can see what's inside of them. Okay, so in the bottom, I like to put all of my six by six paper packs in the back. I have some paper punches here, either little punches to round the corners or some shape punches or just a little um, hole punch here. And then I do have a little pack of pre-made cards, which it's very handy if you are do, may, needing to make a card in a hurry. So I like to keep those on hand. And then in the second one, I have just some additional tools. So I have a washi tape chomper, and then I have some crafting tools here. I have an additional pair of snips, and then I have a fun little embellishment paper fun thing, <laughs> for lack of better word. So I really, really like how this is organized. Again, this is what works for me. It's a little system that really just helps me be able to see what I need or I can know if I need something 12 by 12, I know exactly where to look. If I need small things, I know where to look. If I just need to really quickly grab something really colorful and get going, I know where to look. If I need to make a quick card, I know where to look. Things like that. So again, I just kind of organize on how I am uh, inspired the best or how I work the best. So that's kind of how I approach that. Okay, so in this final little area and cupboard, I have all of my wooden blanks. So over here, I have all of my painting supplies. So I have my favorite chalk paint that I like to use. And then I also have, you know, my paintbrushes and things like that. Just any type of painting materials that I need are in there. In the back I have some of my larger and longer wood blanks that I just store back there. Here are framed blanks like picture frames, things like that. Some of them are finished, some of them are bare wood and need a coat of paint. And then over here are just some smaller wooden blanks. They could be little um, ornaments, or little wooden shapes like this, or just little fun embellishment type things like this. These are super fun. They're little half beaded wood circles and they're very fun to craft with. 
but smaller types of wood blanks are housed in that left bin. And then down below, I have all of my larger wooden blanks. Again, I like to shop a sale. So if there's something on sale and I know, oh my gosh, that's totally my style. I know I'll use it. Then I tend to pick it up and then just store it. And then I just kind of store in size order. So my bigger things to the right, spanning down to the smaller things on the left. And then I have some canvases and embellishment items over on that left-hand side. Again, this did not change from the last time I did a craft room tour because this really, really works for me. It's something that when I open up this little cabinet, I know exactly where to look. I know where I'm going to be, um, you know, needing to focus my attention for whichever project that I'm using. But I really like this area. I like how it's organized and it definitely works for my crafting needs. Okay, so that is it for the cabinets, and I hope that was helpful and inspiring for how you can set up little zones and areas in your craft room. But to the right of my desk, I have this nice little drawer unit. I've had this forever. It's from Ikea, and it's one of their um, narrower units, but I honestly just have desk supplies and things like that in here. So this is a remote that actually... Um, controls all of my studio lighting. So I just click that on and off when I'm filming. Um, I have some markers here. These are sublimation markers. I really need to try these out. Um, and then I have some pens, some tape, a little bit of a chapstick and lip gloss and lotion. Those are just necessary for filming to make everything look super clean and polished. And then I have some um, USBs and I use these for embroidery. So I like to try to use different sticks for different projects that way. Everything is all organized. Then in this next drawer, it's a surprise to both of us. What is it? Oh, baby wipes. Very important. I love having baby wipes in my craft room because I always just grab these and wipe down things really, really quickly. They're super, super nice. Love, love, love them. Okay, the next thing is I have some sublimation refill ink cartridges down here and this is just waiting because my little sublimation printer keeps warning me that it is almost time to replace so I have those ready to go so that I am not in a pickle because that is the worst when you are super inspired and then you're out of ink. Okay, so that is that little area. The bottom is just um, a filing system for some of the files that I have. Okay, this last little area, the final area, this is where I house all of my stamping and card making supplies. And so this is kind of a new -er area to me. In the top area, I have a basket. And in this basket, I have my um, die cutting and embossing machine. I just ordered something brand new. I'm replacing the one I have. So I ordered um, that this week and it's coming, I think, later in the week. So I'm really excited. So I'm replacing that over on the side here. I have some embossing folders in this nice little container. It's just work. what works for me. I really, really like that. And then I think what else is in here? I think I have got to move my desk up here. Okay. So also in here, oh, I have a little um, area to keep my uh, chamois that keeps it nice and moist and ready to go might as well put this back down it's my little desk here okay there we go and then i have this nice little desk of or little bank of drawers that house all of my little stamping and card making things so in the top one i just have my ink cubes i have my stamping blocks some markers, some cleaning things, and then some additional little card making supplies like my bone folder, my anti-static tool, and things like that. Also, empty bins. I love having empty bins. It's just kind of freeing in um, to have those all around. Okay, in the second drawer, I have some adhesives, some embellishments, additional liquid adhesives are here, some pop-up dots and things like that are here tape runners. This is a lot of actual adhesive in this drawer. Um, embellishments and embossing powders, things like that. So that's a really um, nice drawer as well. And I will do my best to link the, um, I really fell in love with them. These organizational caddies or uh, bins were so helpful. They come in a lot of different sizes. So there are some, you know, 
wider ones, kind of more square in nature over here, but also came with some long and skinny ones that were helpful. Also some short and skinny ones. And then they also had these tiny, um, tiny square ones, which I thought these were really helpful and nice. And I really liked them because of the variety of sizes that came in the pack. So I'll try to link those down below. They're a wonder for um, getting everything organized. Here I have all of my die sets. Then I also have my stamp sets. I am working on getting a new system for organizing those, but this is what's working for me right now. So I'm sticking with it for now until I can um, just dedicate some time to organizing my stamps and dies. And then over here, I have a little blending mat down here. I have my Misty, and then I have a little stamp chamois to clean my stamps. The next drawer, I have my paper. So I have my 110 pound, I have my 80 pound, and then I have some um, paper friendly tape over here for when card making. And then finally, oh, two more, I guess. Down here, I have, oh, the printmaker, We Are Memories printmaker. Um, I really, really like that. I probably should play around with that a little bit more, but so far I've been really enjoying that. I have my um, heat gun here, and then there are some embellishments in that little pretty flower um, tool organizer. And then finally, this is my paper trimmer drawer. So I have um, a bigger um, guillotine type paper trimmer, but then I also, let me see if I can um, get it out here. I also have a smaller paper trimmer down here. So I just have those down in the very bottom. That way I know where they are. They're really quick and easy to grab. All right, everyone. I hope this was helpful, motivating, inspiring in some way. I hope that you got a little bit of a uh, takeaway from this video on how you can approach organizing. Again, I really find that organizing in zones is really, really helpful for me. So again, I have a zone only for heat, tools over here. Then I have my sewing and embroidery zone in this area, which is really nice, again, to have that within a good proximity of my machine. And then, of course, I have, you know, a zone for my blanks down here, paper zone, and then I have miscellaneous wood and, you know, blanks and woods in that zone there. And then underneath the desk, again, I have my paper crafting, card making, and stamping zone there. So if you are like me and kind of like to do a little bit of everything or you have a lot of hobbies but are kind of in a little bit of a mess in your craft room and you kind of need to know how to get organized and how to get everything, you know, exactly where you need it so that you can craft to the best of your ability. I hope that, that this was helpful if you need to start thinking a little bit differently about how you set up your space or just how you organize your space. So I really hope you enjoyed this tour. I really enjoyed filming it for you and I hope that you are inspired in some way. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think, where you are in terms of your craft space. Again, if you saw my first craft room tour, you know that I started out on this tiny little wall with just a desk and have grown from there. So craft spaces, big and small, I feel like there's always the opportunity for some fun organization that will just really help you craft the best way that you can. Thanks so much for watching. I've really enjoyed bringing this and putting this all together for you. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new here because there are so many fun things coming to my craft table next and I can't wait to share. Have a good day and I will see you in the next video.